Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is the Apostate Prophet. Um, I'm a little bit late because I was trying to. Um, I was I was suddenly woken up by uh, this animal that came and told me to sit on its back. It was a donkey, and then we flew together to heaven, and then we came back, and then we went to Jerusalem, and all of that, all that stuff happened. Some for some weird reason, I don't know why that happened. I didn't get anything out of this. It was very stupid. Uh, but I'm here now. How is everybody doing? Echo? What echo? What are you talking about? What echo? Who is echoing? I'm echoing? What? Black Angel, why are you saying I'm echoing? There's no echo. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Is there echo? There's no echo. Okay. Okay, they're trying to sabotage my live stream. Black Angels trying to sabotage my last year. Okay, uh, hello everybody and welcome. This is the Apostate Prophet. So today I want to talk about um, a historical issue. And before making it too long, I want to get right into it. Just give me one second here. I'm going to open a document to then go to this go through this right away. So as many of you know, there is today, um, you're echoing in my heart, Prophet. <laughs> Why are you stuttering? You really want me to go with the sounds now? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna share my screen anyway. And while I'm sharing my screen, I'm gonna share my sounds as well. And I'll get to that. All right. Why are you why stuttering? Okay, so, <clears throat> As we know, as many of you know, the current issue is ongoing. The whole Israel conflict is ongoing. Uh, and there is a lot of talk about who belonged in the Middle East, who belonged in the region Palestine, and who are settlers, who are the indigenous people, and what Israel did wrong, and so on. And uh, I want to dive a little bit in, into the history to talk about something that is often not mentioned and that is a certain individual known as the grand mufti of jerusalem or by his name i mean al husseini briefly here this guy this dude i don't know why he looks like ryan gosling but it would be very very interesting to have a movie about this guy and how he was a nazi collaborator and uh, Ryan Gosling could be could be um, you know casting him. That'll be that'll be very interesting. Let's see, Ryan Gosling here. Don't look too different, right? Here, it's, it might be the same guy. It might be I don't know reincarnation or something. I'm not sure what exactly happened here, but it's basically the same person. See, same person. Uh, so. This is not Ryan Gosling, however, it is actually, <laughs> I know people are surprised, but that's what I see when I look at this guy. I'm like, this, hey, hey, wait a minute. I know this guy from, from some movies that I find quite interesting. Uh, but yeah, so he could probably play the Grand Mufti, uh, I mean, Al Husseini um, <laughs> in a movie, if a movie was made about him. Uh, fun fact. But um of course, this guy was not a very nice guy. The Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, sorry, uh, was not a very nice guy. He was known as the Grand Mufti and, uh, and a Palestinian Arab nationalist. And he was a, a leader, a leader, if not the most important person. He was one of the most important people in the, uh, in the, in the pre-Israel Arab movement, in the nationalist movement in the region which they called Palestine. This is the guy, Amin al-Husseini. Amin al-Husseini. He founded what, uh, what is called the Arab Higher Committee, which was uh, the then representative of the Palestinian nationalist movement, the main movement, the major movement, which was uh, leading the Arabs there, uh, in which they advocated for an Arab nation of their own in this region. He was at the at the at the top of this. He was the leader of this, and he was a uh, grand mufti, uh, meaning the person who gives the fatwas and who 
that, that people go to for religious guidance for nearly two decades in Jerusalem. He was expelled at some point because of rebellions and violence by the British, uh, where after he actually went to live in Germany with the Nazis and where he met Hitler and uh, met with Mussolini's people and Hitler's people and so on. But this guy was at the top of Palestinian nationalism. Um, he was there to basically kick out the Jews and take all of the land uh, over for, for for the for the Arab Muslims. And I will I will get into how exactly the relationship and the collaboration between this guy and Hitler unfolded, and how this is of huge significance to the history of the Israel-Palestine conflict. I have a document which um, which details meetings held between German officials or Hitler and um, other people. And I went into the document and just created a quick uh, PDF of, um, of the meetings held between this Grand Mufti and Hitler and also between this Grand Mufti and the foreign minister in... Um, in Berlin, in Nazi Germany, where you can see some really, really messed up details on what these guys were planning. Can I make this go? I don't know. Um, I never used this Adobe Reader. It's kind of weird. So, um, but to have a little bit of context and a little bit of detail provided. So, um, the Nazis had some interesting projects with the Jews, as many of you already know. Um, is there spam? Sorry, I didn't put the slow mode on, I think. I'll do that quickly. Let me put, I did put slow mode on. Um, so the, the Nazis, uh, Hitler was, of course, very anti-Jewish. He didn't want Jews in Germany. He didn't want Jews in Europe. He thought Jews were these uh, parasitic people who want to suck the blood out of uh, out of the German people and, and uh, you know, defeat the Europeans. And he blamed them for being behind all of the troubles in the world and, and things like that. Uh, he went into a huge rant on... Uh, <laughs> on Jews in his book, Mein Kampf, which is full of insanity. Um, and as, as some of you might know, in the beginnings, there was no explicit plan to exterminate and to kill all the Jews, So, which is, which is why they made certain uh, plans like expelling Jews and getting rid of them, you know, taking them somewhere else, not leaving them in Germany. Eventually, once they realized that uh, it is all logistically a little bit difficult, they decided to implement what they called the final solution instead, for which we have, uh, which is documented, uh, which um, one of the ministers, Heinrich Himmler in Germany, proudly announced in a large gathering, uh, which would be the extermination of Jews, putting them in concentration camps or otherwise executing them. And... Um, Around that time, this Grand Mufti here, the Palestinian nationalist guy, he went to Germany and he met with Adolf Hitler. And some really, really interesting conversations ensued and some really messed up plans ensued. And I feel like we need to talk about this to understand what exactly these guys were planning and how exactly there was no possibility for peace even before Israel was declared a state. So I'm going to quickly, uh, I'm going to go through this. I'm going to read through this uh, this document. It's not a very long document. Uh, and we can then see, let me start right away. So it's, uh, it says, uh, this is by the way, um, what is this? What is this called? This is this. You can find find this online. It's called Documents on German Foreign Policy, 1918 to 1945. Uh, in fact, here, for example, from the Chatham House, you can find it right here. Documents on German foreign policy, 1918, 1945. You can also find it in online uh, archives and things like that. Here on page 876, it gets into a conversation between these gentlemen. The foreign minister in Berlin and the Grand Mufti. It says, according to these German authentic recordings, after introductory words 
of thanks for being received by the foreign minister and for the sympathies tendered by the German government to the Arab peoples in general and Palestine in particular, the Grand Mufti stressed the fact that the Arabs were naturally naturally friends of Germany because both were fighting three common foes, three common enemies, the English, the Jews, and Bolshevism. I can't even mark this. The English, the Jews, and Bolshevism. It doesn't say uh, they were fighting, you know, the English and then, uh, you know, the, I don't know, the Zionists in there or whatever it is. It says the English, the Jews, and Bolshevism. These were the three main enemies of the Nazis. And the Mufti came to tell them that they all have the same common enemies. The English, the Jews, and the Bolshevists, the communists, the pre the, the, the Soviets. It had been a great deed on the part of Germany to have proceeded against these three enemies. The Arabs hoped that Germany would also help them in their own fight on these three fronts. So the Arabs would hope the German, Germans would help them fight the Jews. They thought that victory in this battle was important not only for the Axis, but also for their own people. So he was coming there to sell Germany and Hitler this whole idea of, uh, hey, how about we work together and, uh, you know, you defeat these superpowers and we kill the Jews together. Of course, this is nothing. It gets worse. They were prepared to do everything. And it had indeed been understood in Germany that the cooperation of the Arabs in Palestine, in Iraq and in Syria had been contributions to the common cause. The insurrection in Iraq had not gone off very felicitously fortunately, whatever. But the Arab world took the stand that this was not an end, but only a beginning. At least the Iraqis had now understood that England was their foe. There was a rebellion in Iraq for independence uh, to speed things up and to create their own Arab state. This is what that is talking about. And it, and it failed. It was their desire, however, not only to, re to not only to render negative assistance through insurrection and sabotage, but also to mobilize positive forces. Consideration was being given to an Arab legion that might consist of Arabs from Arif and captured Algerians, Tunisians, and Moroccans. Also, the Arab community of Palestine was on the best of terms with the centers of the Muslim faith, and it was hoped that this would influence the Indians. It was also hoped that there would be opportunity to obtain recruits among the Indian prisoners and to care for them. We continue. This is only a background now. As is well known, it says here, I don't know why there's a huge gap here, Huh. History so often had to suffer from disunity. I guess, I don't know, there's, there's an omission of whatever was said here. It was natural that the Arabs should attach great importance to collaboration with Germany. So think about this. This is 1941. Axis powers. Germany fighting the, uh, the West. Germany fighting the British, the Jews, the, 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 the Bolsheviks, and so on. And here are the Arabs... The, the Arab representative coming and saying, hey, we want to be your allies. Let's fight together. It would then be, if this succeeded, it would be the Palestinian Arabs together with the Nazis and the and fascist Italy against, um, against the, the allied forces. That's what it would be. Uh, let's quickly see here. Amar said, do AP, dude, you've become so full of hate. It's hurtful seeing that it is an ex-Muslim. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm really, I'm, I'm literally here right now talking about, uh, <laughs> talking about the worst hate in history that we know of. And you're accusing me of hate. That's just, that's very, very, very funny. Uh, <laughs> They would like to include an agreement with the Axis power and desired, first of all, to have a declaration in order that the people might understand the attitude of the Axis powers. For as it was, the English were unfortunately planting doubts, while they themselves had already issued various, uh, though rather unimportant, declarations. Unfortunately, as a result of the activity of the English, there had already been some defections among the Arab followers. A declaration would strengthen the movement without, however, causing the people to rise pr prematurely. So... Um, in short, what the Mufti was here for is to ask for a declaration from Germany to immediately publicly, you know, to the world to declare that the Nazis are supporting 
the Palestinians because for now, for now, until this time, they were only doing this behind closed doors. They were meeting, and the Grand Mufti was reassuring that the Arabs are with with the Nazis, and the Nazis are supposed to stand with the Arabs because they have common goal. But the Mufti wanted Hitler to immediately publicly declare their alliance and say, hey, they are now our people, so that the Arabs would find the motivation to fight the, uh, the, 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 the British. But the Nazis were kind of careful about this until they had more influence in the Middle East. Um, nor did he, the Mufti, think that such a declaration would antagonize the Turks, for the Turks preferred to see weak neighbors on Palestine's borders rather than a strong power. Under the mandate system, this meant France. The French, for their part, had as early as 1933 contemplated a union of Syria and Iraq, and later on in 1936, even the independence of Syria. In summary, the Mufti once more referred to the importance of the declaration, and particularly to the fact that it must be issued without delay. He then expressed his thanks for the support that had been given by the Axis powers to Rashid Ali's venture. Who was Rashid Ali again? Rashid Ali, not the singer. Oh, that was the that was the nationalist. Okay, that was the nationalist who was uh, in charge of Iraq. That was the Iraqi nationalist. Um. The foreign minister observed that this venture had been premature and that in German political life something important had been learned from the English, namely timing. So uh, not only is here a collaboration between the Palestinian people and, you know, the Palestinian Arabs and the Nazis, there's also a collaboration between the, the Iraqi Arabs at the time and the Nazis. So the, the Arab leaders in the region very much saw the Nazis, Nazi Germany, as their as their allies. And had they attained the power and the independence to stand for themselves, they would probably have allied with the Nazis and been a Nazi ally during the Second World War. They already inofficially were. And that is very, very messed up. Um... Nikolai Mogensen said, I uh, I mean, it's not surprising the dude was super anti-Semitic. He even used the slogan Ebtal Yehud during the uh, World War II in an uprising against the Brits in Iraq. Yep, yep, yep. They were, they didn't have an issue with just Zionism. They didn't just have an issue with, uh, you know, Zionists coming and taking their land away. They had an issue with Jews altogether. They wanted to get rid of Jews. They wanted to kill the Jews. They wanted to exterminate them. And we'll see that in a little bit. Um, imagination had often been engaged to concept person in past year. As a nationalist, he felt much sympathy for such an undaunted champion of his people who had also never abandoned the struggle. He wished to emphasize what the Mufti had said about the three common foes of the Arabs and the German people. Russia was now as good as beaten, and the political power of Bolshevism was almost broken. <laughs> This is so delusional. This is in 1941. Uh, and they are sitting here thinking the Soviets are already beaten almost. The Bolshevism is no more. They're going to be defeated and all done soon. That's what they were uh, here fantasizing about. Unbeknownst to them, several years later, the Soviets, because of the alliance with the with the Allied forces, would storm into Germany and create a massacre and also cause Hitler to eventually commit suicide in desperation. Yeah, it was also interesting. Um, Nazar Troop said, what a paradox. Bolsheviks these days are allies with Islamists. I know it's, it's very, um, it's interesting, right, that there are I tweeted about this earlier, but the, these leftists who went around calling everyone Nazis for many years now were the first to uh, to jump on the whole anti-Semitism train and to hate Jews and to basically advocate for the removal of Jews from that region. And you know, they they immediately started saying things like, you know, the, they they don't belong there; they are colonizers. Of course, they should be removed, and this and that. It's it's. It's so messed up. It's so messed up. It's so messed up. 
The Fuhrer was determined never to let this danger spot become active again. They're still talking about the communists who would later destroy the Nazis, which is very funny. All right. Um, let's, let me skip here. Uh, as far as Iraq was concerned, the foreign minister was afraid that they had begun too early there, nor had Germany been in a position to contribute anything. The sea was controlled by the English fleet. Air operations were impossible because they were uh, beyond the range of the flighter, flighter, fighter planes and so on. Uh, they attempted to go toward Turkey, but Turkey refused to give them a uh, pass. Herr von Papen had to be sure been promised that the transit of material would be permitted, but apparently under English pressure, the Turks finally refused permission. So the Nazis couldn't help the Arabs in the Middle East because the Turkish, because Turkey was being stubborn and was blocking them access to go to the the, the Arab Middle East. I guess I guess you can thank the Turks here of that time. You can thank Turkey here of that time a little bit for this, although Turkey at that time was a little bit messed up as well. All right, Mufti, foreign minister, suggestion, troops, answered, affirmative, Mufti, and so on. Mufti, Mufti, Mufti. Uh, the foreign minister then stated that upon the outbreak of the war, when Minister Grubber was sent to the Near East, okay, this is all, all very much irrelevant. Um, they reply had been negative because a Syrian operation was impossible. They're talking about the logistics. I want to come more to the to the actual ideas which they had. Declaration time. Foreign minister once more summed up the arguments. Black Sea, Germany, Mufti, Venture stated. The Mufti stated this was to be sure no longer the case in Palestine, but in, in other Arab areas, people still thought differently. He considered it important for the declaration to be issued. So they were still waiting for the declaration from the Nazis here. I printed this part out. I actually want to go directly to him meeting with the Nazis, with, with, with Hitler, because here he's just talking to the foreign minister. But then here, document number 515, look here, look, who, look what we have here. Look what we have here. A record of the conversation between the Führer, Hitler, and the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem on November 28, 1941, in the presence of a Reich foreign minister and Minister Grobba in Berlin. And we have a few photos of that as well, those who haven't seen it. Grand Mufti of Jerusalem with Hitler. Let's have it right here. Let's have it right here. Look at these. Look at these fine gentlemen here. Look at these fine, fine gentlemen here. Look at how they're sitting here in a friendly way. Look at the respect that this guy offers to Hitler, who vows to get rid of the Jews. Oh, look at these guys. Look at the Mufti meeting with the Nazis. Look at the look at the Mufti here. Mufti here saluting armies. The Mufti also created, uh, collaborated in creating a Muslim force among the Nazis and wanted to raise armies that would have an allegiance to the Nazis. He recruited Muslim Bosnians and saluted them as the Mufti, as an Imam, as a Muslim leader, to reassure them that uh, their Muslim cause and the cause of Arabs in the Middle East is in alignment with, um, with, with, with the Nazis. This was his whole goal. And this was not just some random guy. This was the... <laughs> the main leader of the Palestinian nationalist movement at the, at the time. So let's look at the conversation between the Mufti and Hitler. The Grand Mufti began by thanking Hitler, the Führer. I'll just say Hitler instead of saying the Führer, which is a weird way to, a weird thing to say, because it just means the leader in English. I don't know why we always say the Führer. <laughs> the Grand Mufti began by thanking Hitler for the great honor he had bestowed by receiving him. He wished to seize the opportunity to convey to Hitler of the greater German Reich, the empire, admired by the entire Arab world. Look, the Führer of the greater German Reich and admired by the entire Arab world. His thanks for the sympathy which he had always shown for the Arab and especially the Palestinian cause. Wow. 
this is a very very nice thing to highlight here isn't it he wanted to thank the Führer of the great German Reich who is admired by the entire Arab world and deliver him his thanks for the sympathy which he had always shown for the Arabs and especially the Palestinian cause wow this reminds me of this here which Hitler also said according to Albert Speer his minister Hitler concluded his historical speculation by remarking, you see, it's been our misfortune to have the wrong religion. Why didn't we have the religion of the Japanese, who regards sacrifice for the fatherland as the highest good? The Mohammedan religion, too, would have been much more compatible to us than Christianity. Why did it have to be Christianity with its meekness and flabbiness? So according to Hitler, Christianity made the German people weak and, you know, not lustful, not uh, not lustful for war and, and 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 blood. It didn't make them warlike enough. He wished they were Muslims. Poor, poor Hitler. That's the situation. <clears throat> and to which he had given clear expression in his public speeches. The Arab countries were firmly convinced that Germany would win the war and that the Arabs would cause would then prosper. That the Germany would win the war and the Arab cause would then prosper. There's so much to highlight here in this conversation between Hitler and the Mufti. The Arabs were Germany's natural friends because they had the same enemies as had Germany, namely the English, the Jews, and the communists. They were therefore prepared to cooperate with Germany with all their hearts and stood ready to participate in the war not only negatively by the commission of acts of sabotage and the instigation of revolutions, but also positively by the formation of an Arab legion, an Arab legion for the Nazis. That would be a Nazi Arab legion. Imagine that. The Arabs could be, you don't have to imagine that, that's basically what Hamas is and what all the others are. The Arabs could be more useful to Germany as allies than might be apparent at first glance, both for geographical reasons and because of the suffering inflicted upon them by the English and the Jews. The Jews. Furthermore, they had close relations with all Muslim nations of which they could make use in behalf of the common cause. The Arab legion would be quite easy to raise. An appeal by the Mufti to the Arab countries and the prisoners of Arab, Algerian, Tunisian, and Moroccan nationality in Germany would produce a great number of volunteers eager to fight for Nazi Germany. Of Germany's victory, the Arab world was firmly convinced. <laughs> Not only because the Reich possessed a large army, brave soldiers, and military leaders of genius, but also because the Almighty could never award the victory to an unjust cause. To According to this guy, the Nazi cause was a just cause. According to Allah, that's what he says. He thinks Allah considers the Nazi cause a just cause, whereas the Zionist cause and the Allied cause is an unjust cause, terrible cause. That's what he's saying. That's what he'd be saying. In this struggle, the Arabs were striving for the independence and unity of Palestine, Syria, and Iraq. They had the fullest confidence in the Führer, in Hitler, and looked to his hand for the balm on their wounds, which had been inflicted upon them by the enemies of Germany, uh, by which they mean the Jews, the communists, and the British. Let me quickly take a sip of my Coca-Cola to stay healthy all right <clears throat> the mufti then mentioned the letter he had received from germany which stated that germany was holding no arab territories and understood and recognized the aspirations to independence and freedom of the arabs just as he supported the elimination of the jewish national home Look at this. Now look at this. Look at this. And then there is a one, apparently a reference to the letter of April 1941 and so on. But look at this. Look at this. Look at the common cause here. Look at the common cause here. The Mufti received a letter from Germany 
a letter from Germany. So a letter from the Nazis. The Mufti receives a letter from the Nazis in which Germany assures that they don't hold any Arab territories, that they recognize Arab independence, and that they want to eliminate the Jewish national home, which would be the Jewish home in the region then known to them as Palestine, the Zionist home. There, were, there is a history to all of this, which is that uh, in the early 1930s, the Germans temporarily agreed to have Jews travel over there to Palestine. That was the that was the deal. They were like, okay, at least this way we can get rid of them. We can get rid of some of them. So at first they agreed to send them over there. In the meantime, they also sent letters to Arab leaders like this Mufti here to collaborate with them and to destroy those Jews and their home over there. This is how messed up the situation is. A collaboration between uh, Nazi Germany and uh, the Palestinian leader and Arab leaders basically to um, you know, conclude or fulfill or to a greater extent of the Holocaust. Yes, that's known as the, um, as the Havara Agreement. Havara Agreement, which is a an agreement that was uh, in early in the early 1930s, where the Nazis made an agreement with the with the with the Jew, Jewish representatives to have some of them, bunch of them, travel over there to the region Palestine, as they called it and knew it. And this was actually a very controversial agreement among like many Jews didn't like it, many non-Jews didn't like it, many Germans didn't like it, but uh, so. They sent them over there first, and later they reassure the Arab leaders that they want to together eliminate the Jews. Tamir Nahmani said, can you post this as a video as well? That was actually my original goal. Uh, I might clip and post it, or I might, I might do a separate video on this as well. A public declaration in this sense would be very useful for its propagandistic effect on the Arab people at this moment. It would re rouse the Arabs from their momentary lethargy <clears throat> lethargy and give them new courage. It would also ease the Mufti's work of secretly organizing the Arabs against the moment when they could strike. Secretly organizing the Arabs. At the same time, he could give the assurance that the Arabs would in strict discipline patiently wait for the right moment and only strike upon an order from Berlin. The Arabs would strike upon an order from Berlin from the Nazis. This is funny, right? Because I watched so much about the Nazis. I heard so much about the Nazis. I read so much about the Nazis from, from you know, I don't know, from popular culture or schools, education, this and that. Uh, you, we hear so much about the Israel-Palestine conflict, but whoever talks about these details here, whoever talks about the fact that uh, the, the, the Palestinian leader, the main Palestinian leader, the Muslim leader in Palestine, wanted to uh, was secretly collaborating with the Nazis to basically eliminate the Jews. Bath said, am I muted or do you all just ignore everything I say? Probably everyone is ignoring what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. The Turks would welcome the establishment of an Arab government, uh, one, one million seven hundred thousand Arabs, and so on. France, likewise, would have, would have no objection to the unification plan because they had conceded independence to Syria as early as 1936 and given approval for the unification of Iraq and Syria under King Faisal as early as 1933, and so on make a public declaration, inspire, and so on. Hitler replied that Germany's fundamental attitude on these questions, as the Mufti himself had already stated, was clear. Germany stood for uncompromising war against the Jews. Of course, this is not a surprise. Everyone knows this. But what's important here is, in this context here, the, uh, the Hitler, Hitler's Nazi Germany, 
is in an uncompromising war, not against the Jews in Germany, but also against Jews in the Middle East and the Jews in this region. So they wanted to help get rid of the Jews. That naturally included active opposition to the Jewish national home in Palestine. So no home for Jews, only for the Arabs. And if one thing is clear from history, and even today, unless you are willfully ignorant or just ignorant, is had the Arabs here, the Arab nationalists, taken the region over, or you know, had, had Hamas right now, for example, overpowered uh, the Jews, or even if you gave all the power, all the weapons, everything that, that, that Israel currently has to the Arab side, and they took over the entire land, it wouldn't end well for the Jews. From the beginning until now, it was always about getting rid of the Jews. It was never about compromise. There never was a compromise. There never was a plan to establish two states and recognize the existence of a Jewish home in this region. <laughs> Serendipity said, uh, watching from beginning Mufti Ryan Gosling, Hussaini. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Which was nothing other than a center in the form of a state for the exercise of destructive influence by Jewish interests. Yeah, any Jewish existence would be a danger to the world. Say the Nazis, Hitler and Mufti. I mean, Al-Husseini. For those who just joined, we're talking about the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, Mufti Amin al husseini this guy who is also possibly the grandfather of Ryan Gosling or something like, or the grand-grandfather of Ryan Gosling. Who knows? Uh, look exactly the same. Germany was also aware that the assertion that the Jews were carrying out the function of economic pioneers in Palestine was a lie. <laughs> This is so funny because the, uh, the, the Jews, especially those who uh, settled there and purchased land, were the ones who, base, who were basically building. And the Arab side was preparing to just destroy everything. Um, the work there was done only by the Arabs, not by the Jews. <laughs> this is a very typical fantasy world of Nazi Germany. Germany was resolved step by step to ask one European nation after the other to solve its Jewish problem and at the proper time direct a similar appeal to non-European nations as well. There are some Holocaust deniers who really, uh, who hate Jews, but who also want to assure us that Germany's fight was with the Jews of Germany and the Jewish community in Germany, and that you know they should just go and live there and have their own Jewish home. But the Nazi goal was very clear. The Nazi goal was to eradicate the Jews. And the Nazis had a shared goal with the Palestinian leadership in eradicating the Jews. I'm sorry, but it's right here. That's basically what it says. Germany was at the present time engaged in a life and death struggle with two citadels of Jewish power, Great Britain and Soviet Russia. This is one of the delusions of uh, Nazi Germany and one of the propaganda points, which is that uh, Great Britain is led by the Jews and Soviet Russia is also led by the Jews. And they are the devil, which is why they won't unite with Germany, which is why they are fighting with Germany. What's very funny is that at the same time, Stalin was in power in Soviet Russia and Stalin didn't like Jews at all. Like Stalin's... Uh, Stalin's thoughts on Jews were not very different from, from Hitler's views on Jews. He didn't like Jews. He thought they were troublemakers. He thought having Jews in, in the Soviet government would be a downfall of the communist ideals. He thought uh, the Jews were there to basically infil infiltrate and, and bring down the wonderful utopia, the paradise of his, of his socialist communist society. It's, it's funny because the Nazis were, were saying similar things about the Jews and, the, and Stalin was also saying such things about the Jews, but they were completely on opposite sides of a spectrum, accusing the Jews of basically wanting to bring down their empire and turn it into this other side's uh, dark world. 
they both didn't like Jews. And uh, I, I, bas I briefly talked about this two days ago in David's live stream. Um, Stalin and others in the Soviet Union, they had a term for Jews uh, or influential Jews, which they called rootless cosmopolitan, um, which is an accusation of Jewish people who have no roots, no home, no homeland, and are just there to build power and to exploit wherever they live. This was a this was a Soviet idea. It was Soviet anti-Semitism. And yeah, what, what what people fail to see when they say that the Soviets stopped Nazi Germany is that the Soviets didn't have any problem at all with the anti-Jewish uh, attitude of, of Nazi Germany. They only fought Germany because the Germans betrayed them. That's it. Germany made an agreement, uh, the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, where they would... Uh, not fight each other, but collaborate in splitting Eastern Europe in half between them. Uh, but Germany violated this agreement, which is why the Soviets fought them. That's the only reason they fought. Theoretically, there was a difference between England's capitalism and Soviet Russia's communism. Actually, however, the Jews in both countries were pursuing a common goal. This was decisive struggle on the political plane. It represented itself in the main as a conflict between Germany and England. But ideologically, it was a battle between national socialism and the Jews. Yeah. Hitler was just a... Uh, Hitler was crazy. It went without saying that Germany would furnish positive and practical aid to the Arabs. Germany would furnish positive and practical aid to the Arabs involved in the same struggle against the Jews, because platonic promises were useless in a war for survival or destruction in which the Jews were able to mobilize all of England's power for their ends. The Jews. The aid to the Arabs would have to be material aid of how little help sympathies alone were in such a battle had been demonstrated plainly by the operation in Iraq, which was a failure. So, in spite of all the sympathies, German aid had not been sufficient and Iraq was overcome by the power of Britain, that is the guardian of the Jews. <laughs> the Mufti could not be aware, could not but be aware, however, that the outcome of the struggle going on at present would also decide the fate of the Arab world. Hitler, therefore, had to think and speak coolly and deliberately as a rational man and primarily as a soldier, as the leader of the German and allied armies, everything of a nature to help in this titanic battle for the common cause and thus also for the Arabs would have to be done for the common cause and thus also for the Arabs. There's so much to highlight here, so much to display here, such a blatant and clear clear, clear display of Nazi collaboration with the Arabs and a speak, speaking of a common cause. It's so funny um, that some people in the chat are, <laughs> are crying this entire time um, about this. I'm just, I'm, I'm just presenting history here. I'm not making anything up. I'm not reading any. This is not even commentary. This is directly from official German documents. For those who missed it, this is from Documents on German Foreign Policy, 1918-1945, which is a vast collection, compilation of documents in Germany of um, German ministers or German, German ministers or Hitler meeting with people and them writing everything down. I'm only presenting history here. I'm not even... Uh, reading a commentary or anything like it. This is not a book. This, this is not a commentary by people. This is directly historical record. <clears throat> anything, however, that might contribute to the weakening, the military situation must be put aside, no matter how unpopular this, my, this move might be. Germany was now engaged in very severe battles to force the gateway to the northern Caucasus region. The difficulties were mainly with regard to maintaining the supply, which was most difficult as a result of the destruction of railroads and highways, as well as the oncoming winter. If at such a moment Hitler were to raise the problem of Syria in a declaration, those elements in France which were under the girl's influence would receive new strength. They would interpret Hitler's declaration as an intention to break up France's colonial empire and appeal to their fellow countrymen. 
that they should rather make common cause with the English to try to save what still could be saved. So Hitler wanted to completely help the Arabs here. He was just worried that putting out an official declaration would mess things up, which are which were at that, at that point going quite well for Hitler. A German declaration regarding Syria would in France be understood to refer to the French colonies in general, because um, at this time, 1941, um, if I can actually find a map of colonial Middle East, it, this would illuminate the situation a little bit better. Um, at this time, 1941, the Middle East was split like, where do we have something here? Collections, archive, where is this? Europe and the Middle East, 1941. This is very small. Don't we have something bigger here? Nothing bigger. But hey, anyway, I think, I hope you can see this well. But there was a Syrian mandate here, which was under French control. There was Transjordan, which was under British control. And there was Palestine, the mandate of Palestine under British control. Egypt was under British control and so on. Uh, Cyprus was directly controlled by the by, by the British. Uh, but what happened here is um, the mandate of Palestine was established after the Second World War. And the mandate of Palestine was essentially this here. This here. Which was this region, Palestine. And this eastern region, east of the Jordan River, which was called Transjordan. The initial plan during the First World War by the British was to uh, build a Jewish land in all of this. All of this. A national Jewish home in all of this region. Later it was changed and officially in 1922 declared by the British to split this in two and to only establish a Jewish home in this region only in this region, in, the, in what they called the historic Palestine, while uh, east of the Jordan River, there would be another home for Arabs, which would be Transjordan. So they thought, okay, you know what? This will cause problems if we give all of this to the Jews. So let's split this. Let's give this one to the Jews where they can have their own home in peace and prosperity. And this part we can just, we can then give to the Arabs. But the Arab side, of course, didn't want that. There was a lot of a lot of fighting, a lot of uh, a lot of rebellion, a lot of protesting. In the end, with the help of the United Nations, they agreed to have a partition of this part as well, where some of it would be Arab land and some of it would be a Jewish state. To which the Arabs also objected and then declared war on the Zionist Jews. But yeah, anyway, so that's what we're talking about here. <clears throat> That's what we're talking about here. Hitler then made the following statements to the Mufti, enjoining him to lock it in the uttermost depths of his heart. This is very important, ladies and gentlemen. Here, Hitler wants to give the Mufti statements that he wants the Mufti to lock into the uttermost depths depths of his heart. So are you ready to take it into your hearts? Are you ready for this? One, he, Hitler, the Fuhrer, would carry on the battle to the total destruction of the Judeo-Communist Empire in Europe. That's number one. Take this into your heart. Lock it in there. That's what he says. Number two, at some moment which was impossible to set exactly today, but which in any event was not distant, the German armies would, in the course of the struggle, reach the southern exit from Caucasia. Caucasus. To quickly illustrate that as well here, for to give more insight into this. This is the Caucasus. Here's Turkey, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Georgia, and so on. So Hitler's promise was to defeat communist Russia and then to descend from here southward. 
he would then be confronted with Turkey, which was in the way. But um, I guess his idea was either to win the Turkish over or to invade them. And from the history, we know that Hitler didn't shy away from saying, either you let us through or you become our subjects or we will invade and take over. That's what they would have done. That was the promise here. Number three, as soon as this had happened, the Führer would on his own, Hitler would on his own, give the Arab world the assurance that his hour of liberation had arrived. The Führer would give Arabs the assurance that the hour of their liberation is now here. The Nazis have come to save the Arabs from the evil Jews. Germany's objective would then be solely the destruction of the Jewish element residing in the Arab sphere under the protection of British power. Very important. Very, very important to highlight and to mention, to recognize, to remember. This is the assurance that Hitler gave to the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, to the leader of Palestinian nationalism. Germany's objective would be solely the destruction of Jewish element residing in the Arab sphere under the protection of the British power. So they would come to destroy the Zionists, the, the Jews in the region Palestine and make sure that all of it belongs to the Arabs. Now, Lots of them say nowadays, hey, you know, uh, the Jews, they did, they, they, uh, you know, they, they built land there and they, they took it away. It's, it's all because, you know, all the rebellion and this and that, all the fighting is because of, because of what Jews did in 1948. You can clearly see here, this is 1941. This is happening in 1941, seven years before Israel became a state, seven years before Israel declared independence, six years before even a partition plan was made, long before anything that the anti-Zionist side nowadays wants to use as an, as an excuse, long before any of that. The Mufti was conspiring with Hitler here in secret to eradicate the Jews. This is clear evidence, clear proof. This is it. There was never a noble goal of, you know, living in peace and sharing and all of that. It was the eradication of Jews, which the Grand Mufti, the Palestinian leader, wanted uh, was was planning with Hitler. They were, yeah, they were allies of Hitler, literally Hitler. This is literally Hitler talking to another literally Hitler. And with this hist with this knowledge, with the knowledge of this history, I just feel it just feels amazing to me that some people come and are like, "You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know history. Did you read history? It's because the Jews, uh, you know, they 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 took their homes and this and that, and the Jews they were planning this and that." Dude, I know the history. This here is the history. This is undeniable. Undeniable. We're proud of that. In that hour, the Mufti would be the most authoritative spokesman for the Arab world, Hitler would give the leadership of the Arab world to this Grand Mufti. It would then be his task to set off the Arab operations which he had secretly prepared. Secretly prepared. When that time had come, Germany could also be indifferent to French reaction to such a declaration. This is... <laughs> People everywhere should be learning this, especially when we talk about the conflict, when we talk about the World War II. People in the world should be learning this. This was a secret plan between Hitler and the Palestinian nationalist Grand Mufti of Jerusalem. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is directly a historic document. This is a German document. German historical document, for those who missed it, this is Documents on German Foreign Policy in 1918 to 1945. This is directly recorded and written down by uh, Germany. The German secret project with the Palestinian nationalists to remove 
to eradicate the Jews permanently, forever. Once Germany had forced open the road to Iran and Iraq through Rostov, it would be also the beginning of the end of the British world empire. He, Hitler, hoped that the coming year would make it possible for Germany to thrust open the Caucasian gate to the Middle East. <laughs> this was in 1941. Things didn't go very well for them. For the good of their common cause, it would be better if the Arab proclamation were put off for a few more months than if Germany were to create difficulties for herself without being able to help the Arabs. He, Hitler, fully appreciated the eagerness of the Arabs for a public declaration of the sort requested by the Grand Mufti, but he would beg him to consider that the Hitler himself was the chief of state of the German Reich for five long years, during which he was unable to make to his own homeland the announcement of his liberation. This here is actually uh, quite an important part. It's, it says uh, he would beg him to consider, so Hitler would beg the Mufti to consider that he himself was the chief of state of the German Reich for five long years, during which he could not openly declare his intentions. So he wanted to, he asked the Mufti to also in secretly for now, hide his intentions of collaborating with the Nazis and killing the Jews, all of them. And that, you know, this is just, it's difficult, you know, us, us poor guys, you know, we have to hide our true intentions of, of genocide, you know, poor me. Yeah. <laughs> he had to wait with that until the announcement could be made on the basis of a situation brought about by the force of arms that the Anschluss had been carried out. The Anschluss is the, um, is the, is Germany taking over Austria by diplomatic means basically saying this is part of germany it shall now be really part of germany the moment that germany's tank division and air squadrons had made their appearance south of the caucasus the public appeal requested by the grand mufti could go out to the arab world so as soon as the germans would uh, descend to the caucasus they would then declare to the world that they are now allied with the arabs against the, the jews the british and so on that's what this was all about there, there is one thing that needs to be pointed out here. To be very honest, um, Hitler wasn't very fond of Arabs. <laughs> uh, there is a different speech he gave about uh, Hitler on Arabs and Islam. Let's see. On Islam and Arabs. I didn't say that, but I just remember that. There, there was a, um, a speech by Hitler, which is also recorded, in which he basically said that um, if if Islam, had Islam become successful in Europe, had, had the Muslims uh, who came from Spain, from Andalusia, defeated the French, then Europeans would have become Muslims. And he wishes that that happened because he said uh, Islam would have given Europeans a greater cause to fight and kill and be proud about this. We're proud of that. Whereas uh, Christianity only kept them, you know, like civilized and weak and all of that, which is just, which is, you know, terrible. It's it's weak. It's not good. And, <laughs> but he also said in that speech that um, the Arabs, although came as the leaders of Islam, would probably not survive and not make it very well in Europe because of their inferior uh, nature. And you know their inability to live in a climate like that in like like Europe, and the Germans would then become, as the supreme people, they would become the leaders of Islam, and lead this Islamic empire, which he only wanted to fight and to kill because, according to him, that's exactly what Islam was. Islam was a religion that glorified fighting and dying, and that's what the world needed, according to Hitler. Well, that's what the Germans needed. The Grand Mufti replied that it was his view that everything would come to pass just as the Führer had indicated. He was fully reassured and satisfied by the words which, had, which he had heard from the chief of the German state. He asked, however, whether it would not be possible, secretly at least, to enter into an agreement with Germany of the kind he had just outlined for the Führer. <laughs> he wanted reassurance for this. The Führer replied that he had just now given the Grand Mufti precisely that confidential declaration. He was careful not to give the Mufti this stuff written on paper. Funny. 
The Grand Mufti thanked him for it and stated in conclusion that he was taking his leave from Hitler in full confidence and with reiterated thanks for the interest shown in the Arab cause. This is the document. This is the document. There is more to this, but I'm not going to go into that. There is there is more. There are meetings between uh, the Grand Mufti and uh, Italian representatives, since at this point um, Italy under Mussolini was also allied to uh, Nazi Germany, fascist Italy, and the Grand Mufti was also trying to cooperate with them and was here an unofficial ally of the of the Axis powers, of the Nazis and fascists. So <laughs> this is this is the reality. The reality here, as you can clearly see, again, to highlight this one here, as soon as this happened, the Führer would on his own give the Arab world the assurance that its hour of liberation had arrived. Germany's objective would then be solely the destruction of the Jewish element residing in the Arab sphere under the protection of British Germany, British power, sorry. In that hour, the Mufti would be the most authoritative spokesman for the Arab world. It would then be his task to set off the Arab operations, which he had secretly prepared. When that time had come, Germany could also be indifferent to the French reaction to such a declaration. Yeah. Had to read it in the German accent to make it as authentic as possible, but this is pretty much it. The secret plan, not a conspiracy theory, the secret plan between the Palestinian leader, the Palestinian leadership, in mandatory Palestine and Nazis to overpower and eradicate the Jews for a common cause. This is what happened. This is the reality. This is the truth. Now you have it. Ryan Gosling's grandfather met with Hitler to together eradicate the Jews and be allies. They wanted to, Ryan Gosling wanted to be allies with Hitler and kill the Jews. That's what they wanted. Oh yeah, I was, I was also pointing out earlier, so Hitler didn't really like our Arabs very much. Um, he could probably uh, appreciate them as allies in that region to exterminate the Jews, according to his plan here, and fight the British, but pretty sure at some point um he would also turn on the turn against the arabs and then you know eradicate them as well or you know in his ideal world if if, if germany could conquer the world they would probably use the arabs temporarily as puppets and then replace them while also enslaving all the sub-saharan africans and so on so ryan gosling's grandfather here who was trying to collaborate with Hitler, um, he was an idiot. Or he was trying to be smart. He was trying to exploit Hitler's anti-Semitism for his own part. But in a future where Nazis rule, even Ryan Gosling's grandfather here, Amin al-Husseini, would not have been able to prevent the Nazis from basically using or abusing Hitler in the end. That's what happens. And for legal reasons to protect myself, I want to say very briefly that when I say that this is Ryan Gosling's grandfather, I'm just joking. Uh, but hey, they look, they look exactly the same, don't they? It's like, it's not just me. Everyone says the same thing. It's a fact. It's a fact. This is basically Ryan Gosling's grandfather. Or, it's, or it is Ryan Gosling in another life. It's, it's, Ryan Gosling is the reincarnation of this guy. Wait, when was Ryan Gosling born? Let's see. Ryan Gosling birth date. He was born in 1980. And when was this? When did this guy die? Look, Ryan Gosling was was born in 1980. This guy died in 1974. It makes sense. Six years gap, but then reincarnated as Ryan Gosling. This makes sense. Completely reasonable. You know it's true. <clears throat> He was very good in the Barbie movie, by the way. Uh, anyway, now, let's see. 
This was helpful, right? Of course, it was helpful. Cedric de Moulinier said, uh, you're opposed, opposed too late to apologize. <laughs> I'm never too late to apologize. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Apostate, my wife is saying, what are you going on about? I'm this. This is just this. It's Ryan Gosling. I just want to point out the truth here. <laughs> Elizabeth Hardy said the topic freaks someone out in the chat. I know I saw it. Some people were going nuts in the chat, <laughs> especially someone was repeatedly like, no, you, this is propaganda, propaganda. What about this? What about that? And I'm here just reading a document. Like a historical document, not even reading commentary or anything, just a document. <laughs> but yeah, the document shows very very clearly. The Palestinian leadership collaborated with Nazi Germany long before 1947, long before 1948, to exterminate the Jews, because that's what they wanted. Francis Bouillet said, no stuttering, God bless you, Tisha Curlea. Thank you so much, I appreciate it very, very, very much. Why are you why stuttering? <laughs> I don't stutter. I stutter a lot, actually. And we're proud of that. Elizabeth Hardy said, This is going to be interesting. Go AP. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's over now. Uh, but I hope it was very interesting. And I'm going to do more on this stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. New one. Walter said, I just figured out when Islam takes 100 world dominance, 75% of the males remain in war against the 25% with the wives. From beyond the river to the sea, all Palestinians need to flee. Thanks, AP. Thank you. Thank you, especially for making that rhyme with AP. That was very good. I appreciate it. Thank you. I will never forget this. I'll accept that Palestine only exists this century. Proof, please. Um, this century? What exactly do you want proof of, Alex? Um, so Palestine was, um, I, I went into the history of that several live streams ago, but let's see, mandatory Palestine. Well, let's see, history of Palestine map. There was something that I actually found quite interesting to illustrate specifically that. Ottoman inaccurate, Ottoman, da, 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 let's see. What does this guy tell us? What does this guy tell us? So what happened is that uh, before before 1948, before Israel announced statehood and declared independence, there was no such thing as a Palestine. Palestine, the region we talk about so often, was just a regular subject and part of the Ottoman Empire, well, this is stupid, uh, was part of the Ottoman Empire. During the First World War, the British defeated the Ottoman Empire and took the land from the Ottoman Empire and turned that into a mandatory state or mandatory governance, not even a state, mandatory Palestine, uh, which they wanted to give to the Jews. That was the plan. Here it is. This is the British mandate. The British mandate they wanted to give to the Jews. They wanted this to be a Jewish homeland. The entirety of this, after they took it from the Ottoman Empire. They called it British Mandate of Palestine. Palestine named because that's how the region was known in European languages. Uh, adopted from the Roman Empire, which uh, officially called this place Palestine which is adopted from some Greek history, where um, a tiny part of this land, what is today Gaza, was referred to as uh, Palestine or as Philistia. Herodotus uh, was the Greek, one of the Greek people who referred to a greater region here as Palestine instead of just a tiny place. And the Romans then called this whole thing Palestine later on. Some say it was as a result of uh, the Romans trying to humiliate the Jews after rebellions and trying to disconnect this land from the Jews uh, and not refer to it as Judea or anything. They wanted to refer to it as Palestine to humiliate them and, and use a name that was, uh, that was their enemy in the Bible. But um, that's not entirely, it's not entirely certain, but that is the most common theory here. 
But uh, in any case, the Romans called it Palestine. When the British took it over at the beginning of the 20th century, they called it British Mandate of Palestine. They wanted to give it all to Jews. Later, they decided, let's give this eastern part to Arabs and the western part to Jews. And later, after protests and protests and blood and war, the, Britain, the British said, enough of this. Just let us get out of here. United Nations, please help. And the United Nations then wanted to split this into what you see here. Partition Plan 1947, Israel, Jewish land, and here, Arab land. This map here is completely wrong. There was no such thing as a Palestine. There was just this land. It was ruled by the British. Jews already lived here. Arabs also lived here. Many Jews came at the beginning of the 20th century. Many Arabs also came from different regions. But lots of Jews came and bought land here rightfully and kept it. While the British Mandate of Palestine also, since they were in charge of this land, gave the Jews much of the public land, which was not owned by the Arabs, because that's what they wanted to do. And unfortunately, the Arab population here that didn't even have a country here before, uh, the Arab population, which was just a subject of the Ottoman Empire, decided, no, we don't want to do that. We don't want Jews to have a state here. We don't want this. We want all of this to be ours. So they fought and fought and fought until they reduced themselves to little bits here. Sorry, that's their problem. And Ryan Gosling here was also one of the main guys who are responsible for this whole fight. Ryan Gosling, who was... Um, an ally of Hitler. Terrible, terrible. Terrible. <clears throat> Knows too much that I mean, Al Husseini set up Hitler, a Hitler youth organization for the Arabs, Al Futuwa. He was to lead the genocide of Jews in Islamic lands if the Nazis won. Yeah. That was the plan. And you have all seen here from Hitler's own mouth, from the Mufti's own mouth, they were collaborating and they were preparing in secret to kill the Jews. No one Walter said, I always believed the Germans were manipulated by the Arabs due to psychological jihad and successfully re reprogrammed Hitler. <laughs> Hitler was bad enough on his own. He was he was a manipulator. He was I don't know. There's there is so much Carl Jung made a like analyzed hitler he lived at the same time as well and actually funnily enough he compared him to muhammad i made a video on this for those who haven't seen it uh go check it out i sometimes forget that i even made that video but i made a video a long time ago uh which was called let me refresh my memory here which was which is called why did Carl Jung compare Hitler to Muhammad? I made this video four years ago in which I explained that Hitler, that Carl Jung analyzed Hitler and compared him to Muhammad and compared Nazi Germany to Islam. That's very, very interesting. <laughs> Wait, no one wants this. Your super chat is 19 euros and 67 cents. This is funny. <laughs> this is funny. Uh, are you hinting at the 1967 war? That's that's funny. I didn't even notice that. I wouldn't notice if my wife pointed that out. <laughs> uh, Anthony Lefleur said, what's up, AP? Which side do you think Sheikh Eboudi would be in this Israel versus Hamas war? It's very... Um, Sheikh Eboudi is very unpredictable, but I, I'm pretty sure that he would be on the Hamas side because Sheikh Eboudi is a very devout and honest Muslim. He would never support the Jews. Yeah. Unfortunately, can't win him over. Over 80x said the Nazis came out that the Thule Society, founded by Rudolf von Sebottendorf, a proclaimed Freemason and Sufi of the Bektashi order. Uh, I'm not entirely sure about the about the whole occultist and cultist background of the of Nazis, but there was actually um, there were separate separate movements and currents and trends inside the early Nazi movement that were um, impacted by or, you know, that came from such backgrounds. And uh, certain people in Hitler's close circle had occultist ideas and Hitler himself had, had occultist ideas. Hitler was um, publicly a Christian, but he secretly didn't 
care about Christianity, didn't care for Christianity, as we've seen. He publicly said stuff like, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and the dear God, he saw it fit to give me leadership over you so, it, so that we could rise to glory. But he was just using that to appeal to people's uh, you know, religious feelings. He didn't care about uh, God. He didn't care about Christianity. He didn't care about any of that. He just had his maniacal goals of reaching this superhuman state and sacrificing as sacrificing humans left and right if it needs to be done. He didn't care about lives. He didn't care about anything. Beatrice N said, "Bomb, bomb, R with uh, with M O and H I." Yeah, absolutely. You're right. Egyptian prince said, "Was the governments Italy, Germany, Japan, Palestine, etc., are different now? You should know this. It seems you are reaching to make people hate Palestine, free Palestine from Israel, and free Palestine from Islam." I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not saying that today's Palestinian people are Nazis and allies of Nazis. What I'm what I'm pointing out here is that the major leaders of the Palestinian nationalist movement at the time were allies of the Nazis and they had a common cause. That's what I'm pointing out here. I'm going into the history because a lot of people today want to go back to the history and talk about uh, how Zionists came and Zionists stole the land and they were they tried to oppress the Arabs and this and that, which is why the whole conflict started. Otherwise, everything would have been peaceful. And I am here to read the document, the historical document, and to debunk that with clarity and show that the Palestinian leadership all along just wanted to eradicate the Jews. There was never a possibility for peace. Never, ever. And Hamas nowadays is not very different from those Nazis. Hamas is just like the those Nazi collaborators who were led by Ryan Gosling here. Darth Jar Jar said, as a Jew I spent most of my life as an atheist, let me say how much I've enjoyed your content the past several years. I've always found it strange how people conveniently change as it suits them. Thank you. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Appreciate that very much. And hope you're safe and happy and well. Notice said, what a, what a great day. New Crusader King 3 DLC comes out and an AP stream that has also to do with World War II. How could it be better? Really? It came out today. Maybe I have to, maybe I should play a game today. Uh, <laughs> I have to check it out. Um, GG Ryder said, and have fun, eh? How is it? Is it good? GG Ryder said, David Ben-Gurion should have become pen pals with the Grand Mufti and uh, Al-Husseini and Hitler, then peace. I know. Like, if Jordan Peterson was around back, then he would, he would have just said, how about, how about we quit squabbling? Uh, how about find a pen pal? Ben-Gurion... How about uh, you choose the Grand Mufti Al Husseini as a pen pal, and you together you write a you write a letter to Hitler? How about you you write each other and you find peace? We all have something in common. We have to recognize the true enemy. Uh, How about no? <laughs> A happy Imago said, you're an extremely important figure as you give Muslims a path to leave the cult. The Arabs clearly wanted to massacre the Jews. The worst you can say about the Jews is that they expelled some Arabs during the war. Thank you so much. I appreciate that and I appreciate your words. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, and this is a funny thing. There, there should be a long... Maybe I should, I should make a whole stream on that sometime. On the Nakba on the infamous Nakba, which they like to talk about. The Nakba, which is the catastrophe, as they call it, which was the event of, in 1948, Arabs leaving in masses, around 500,000 or more. The, the lands, much of which are today Palestinian territories and Israel, and fleeing or being pushed out. Lots of them fled. Lots of them left, and lots of them were also expelled. And it, I, I know that there are some people who, who want to say that all of them left. There are some people who say all of them were expelled, but there's nuance to this. Lots of them left, lots of them fled, and uh, many of them all were also expelled. Rightly so, because there was a war which they started. The Arabs 
uh, in the region. They conspired. In 1947, they started a civil war by protesting the UN partition plan, uh, which became violent. Um, and then in 1948, when Israel declared an independence, they then came together with the Arab states and declared war on Israel. And Israel, as a result of that, expelled a lot of the Arabs who lived in the, in the region and didn't want to take them back later on. If the Arab side did that very same thing, they would justify this today and say, well, shouldn't have fought them. But since the, since the Zionists did this, it's apparently unjustifiable. Unjustifiable. They're supposed to take all of the Arabs in. And even Arabs who never had anything to do with it, they should take them all in. That would be a justice. Yeah, get out of here. How about no? Uh, but thank you. Noctambula said, hi, AP, unrelated question. Where do I start sharing about the problems of Islam with my Muslim friends that are willing to have that discussion? Love you. Um, it really depends on who you're talking to. It's a difficult question. Thank you. I appreciate that. But really depends on who you're talking to. Um, depends on how firmly they believe in Islam. Depends on if you actually want to talk with them about it. I don't know. Do you? Is it necessary? I, I, I like to differentiate. I like to make a you no know, separate in my in my in my private life. I like to separate my private life from my from my activism here. Like when I was in Turkey, for example, I was surrounded by Muslims, and I had friends there. Um, shared a home with Muslims, and in my private life, I didn't bother talking to anybody about the stuff that I thought, even when I was posting things online, and that was long before my before my YouTube journey. Um, but I don't know, unless you have a have a good reason, or unless it is important and it comes up, I personally don't really consider it necessary. But if you want to start somewhere, um, depends on the values that these people hold. You could start with uh, with Islam's view on women, which is a very important, a very interesting thing in today's time in Western society, especially. Uh, apostasy laws are another thing. I made a video together with, uh, I made a video where I collaborated with David Wood. You can find it on my channel. It's called um, 10... No, watch this before you convert to Islam. I believe that is what what I what I did. It is a video that is specifically for people who want to convert to Islam. But uh, I would say that that video contains some important points to talk about, even when you talk to some regular Muslims or cultural Muslims, because they are introductory points and they are important to talk about. I would suggest that. Hussein Mashni, hey. How are you saying? I, I know you, you you emailed me several times. I'm supposed to respond to you. I know, but I'm terrible responding, and I'll get back to you, Hussein. <laughs> I am a Palestinian ex-Muslim. This is so scary. Yeah, what do you think about this whole issue? Let me know. Let me know, and I hope you're safe. All colors are entombed in black. <laughs> Made a super chat. Thank you. MT Hakur said, Kim Iverson made a video on this. Please debunk it. I don't know anything about her. I know that she's on Rumble and that she has a channel in which she is currently trying to pander to uh, neo-Nazi and Muslim audiences. Um, never heard of her before any of this, but uh, I don't know. She kept commenting on my stuff on Twitter and people told me, how about you go and have a debate with her? And I said, I'd be happy to if she invites me. So far, I haven't received an invitation or anything, so can't say. I don't know. What video do you mean? I don't know. I have to check this out. I'll see. I'll check it out later. Let's look at Ryan Gosling for now. Can you read my messages, please? I'm, I'm reading it right now. Are you sending me messages? I don't know. But thank you. I will, I will, I will, I will look out. I will see. Kara first said Kim Iverson was with the Hill. Oh, 
I don't know. I've never heard of her before. I don't know who or what she is and why she is what she is. Unicorn 1620 said, thanks so much as always. AP Palestine is a proxy of the Arab League, Islamic regime for their war on Jews, turned a whole nation of people, families into their pawns and radicalized them to hate. I know, that, and that is sad. Um, when we talk about this whole Israel-Palestine thing, lots of people tell me, for example, oh, how could you justify genocide? How could you defend Israel and just wish death? And, and I'm just thinking, are you are you kidding me? I'm not the one who wants people to be killed. <laughs> I point out, and I point it out so often, on streams, in videos, in tweets, in community posts, I said that this whole conflict should not be happening, that the Palestinian leadership doesn't care about the people, that civilians are dying, and that we shouldn't fuel the fighting. You should try to prevent it. You should try to try to make peace. In, in order to make peace, you should oppose groups like Hamas, which will always keep up the war, the bloodshed, the fighting. They don't want peace. How can you possibly be for peace and care about the human lives and then justify anything that Hamas does, for example? Hamas very explicitly says we will never stop. We will continue uh, and we will proudly sacrifice our own people to exterminate Israel. That's what they are saying. How can you pretend to be for lives and then make excuses for such an organization? That organization cannot exist. Such groups cannot exist if you want peace. Arabs in Israel are living very good, peaceful, great lives. 20% of the population. Meanwhile, leadership of the Palestinian territories is cruel and wants to use them as sacrifice. And... Mm, I'm not just saying this because the Zionists are, are paying me tons of money to say this kind of stuff. This is so weird. Uh, <laughs> right now, I see lots of people go around and say, these influencers, these people, they're getting paid by Israel to defend Israel and all of that. And I'm just thinking, man, I, I, I wish. I wish they contacted me and, and offered me some money. I wish they, off, they contacted me and said, hey, we want to offer you this and this much to say something positive about Israel. I'm just joking. I don't think I would sell out for any part or side. But nobody has ever contacted me and said, hey, we are going to pay you to propagate for Israel or for the Jews. That's just complete nonsense. Meanwhile, I see people currently making lots of money posting stuff on uh, Twitter for the pro-Palestine side. All colors said, I feel so betrayed by the left. As a Sardinian leftist, my people are supporting Islamic ideals. It's a plague. It's a torment, an irony. It's ridiculously stupid, I know. Hector made a super sticker. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Unicorn 1620 said, Mein Kampf, my struggle. Jihad, my struggle. Yellow belt, yellow star. Hadith Sahih Muslim 2922, final solution. Yeah. <laughs> I know that you can, you can draw a lot of parallels here between uh, Islam and, and, not, and National Socialism or Islam and the Nazis. Uh, and I did the same thing too. And there are some theories that the Nazis got the idea of labeling Jews from the from the early Islamic history, but I, I, I'm not entirely sure if that's if that's founded on any reality at all. But yeah, um, during the early Islamic caliphates, there was an implementation of, uh, of giving, making different religious groups were different identifiers to separate them from Muslims in society, in the, in the Dhimmi system. And um, the Dhimmi system, under that, the Jews were supposed to wear uh, specific turbans and uh, yellow belts and things like that. Pretty messed up. Pretty, pretty messed up. Jonathan Tyrol said Nazis means nationalists. It actually stands for national socialists, which are a very specific kind, not nationalists. Mort said Apostle Prophet hit the dab to stay away from Islam. Islam. Thank you. Thank you. Unicorn said, forgot in my last super chat, they made disarmed, Jews in Nazi Germany disarmed. I'm sure there's other comparisons I'm missing. Lots, lots of it. Lots of it. 
but yeah, is Islam has a has a final solution as well, which is which needs to be pointed out. Alka said, "Isn't it ironic that the real descendants of the ancient Philistines, the modern Greeks, who were the long enemy of the Israelites, support Israel?" Can you call them the descendants of Phil? I mean, the the, the Philistines were um, were people who were who came from the from what is known as Greek or what was ancient Greece, but um, they were seafaring people who came over the sea and settled in that region, right? Um, if they then assimilated there or just you know died out or whatever happened. But I, I guess there's a common ancestry, if that's what you want to talk about. Yeah. Bender said, must admire hit her because it sounds like hit her. <laughs> must admire. Okay, I see it. I see it. Lots of censorship there. I can't read your super chat here. Uh, thank you, though. Mussolini wanted to perpetrate a genocide against Sardinians, and Sardinians now support the Hamas freedom fight. It makes me sick. I don't know very much about the about fascist Italy and Mussolini's history, except from the some of the geopolitical issues in Africa, like the the war against the, the, the them trying to colonize parts of Africa, fight and invading Ethiopia, and things like that. But I don't I don't really know about that. This is interesting. Bar Muster said, "Made a smiley. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. appreciate it." Stefan Milevich said this person is responsible for recruiting Muslim populations for SS division. Also, he was very good with Croat Ustasha, responsible for the genocide that actually happened, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah, you are from Serbia. You have, you probably know a little bit about the history of this. Did you learn anything about this guy? About the Palestinian leader who encouraged and formed Nazi divisions? in the Balkans, in your education system? I'm really curious. Alkas said, I'm sure the Greek genocide, more than 750,000 people, innocent people, and Armenian genocide, 1.5 million innocent people, are viewed as resistance by Muslims. You know what? Um, so I grew up in Germany, and um, went to Turkey, and went to school there, and lived there, and listened to lots of people there talk about the German talk about the not German talk about the Armenian genocide and um, heard all of all kinds of stuff from my parents too but the thing is you are not very far off because uh, aside from denying that so many Armenians died one of the excuses that people in Turkey often make about the Armenian genocide is that uh, the Armenians were collaborating with Russia and they were planning on killing a bunch of Turks, and the Turks just defended themselves. And then, you know, they and and lots of the Armenians they just died on their way when they were being deported, when they were being, you know, moved. That's what happened. So they are they basically almost acknowledge that the mass killing or mass dying took place, but they just don't want to acknowledge that it was intentional. And they don't want to acknowledge that people were really brutally mistreated and killed, although it is very much proven. Unicorn 1620 said, Mein Kampf still a top seller in Palestine today. I know it was a it was a it was selling very, very well in the Arab world years back. Not sure about Palestine specifically. That would be an interesting thing to look at. Egyptian prince said, okay, thank you for clarifying. I hope you acknowledge Palestinians' right to their homeland. Abraham was from Iraq. Sumer only claimed Jews have is religious. Also, there are Palestinian Jews. I don't think that the current issue is much about religion. I think that the current issue is more about uh, demographics, geopolitics, recent history. I mean, um, of course, Palestinians' right to their homeland. It, it, Netanyahu acknowledge that the Palestinians have a right to a, to a homeland. Netanyahu himself. I know people like to demonize Netanyahu, and I think that he should probably go after this whole war is over. But Netanyahu himself gave a speech a long time ago in which he appealed to Israelis um, and basically asked them to 
work together and also recognize that Palestinian neighbors are a reality which we must deal with and stuff like that. But the thing is, lots of people recognize Palestinian right to homeland, but that right to a homeland cannot mean that um, that they have a right to take all of the land, that they have a right to take uh, more than they ended up with as a result of their disagreement and their aggressions. That right does not include taking um, land that that is that belongs to Israel or which they were which they fled or were expelled from as a result of war. The, these things are simply not cannot be included. You can't do this with any country. There is no country in the world which was attacked many times, which rightfully obtained some land, and which then which then was like, oh, okay, okay, you know what, you know, you guys attacked us, but here, here, have it all back, and also bring all of you guys back, let them live here. That's not how it happens. It's a war. Of course, they have a right to live. But you know what? At this point, honestly, if you want my very honest opinion on this, at this point, I think that the best option. Uh, it looks like would be for the long term to have only one state, and that is Israel, and all of it would be under Israel, and the Arabs would live peacefully there, just as Arabs live peacefully right now in Israel. Because anything else doesn't seem to work. Anything else seems to end up in a in a in, a, in an extremely genocidal anti-Jewish uh, struggle, which they then call fighting for freedom. Hamas is genocidal. The Palestinian Authority is also genocidal. For those who missed it, several weeks ago, under the Palestinian Authority, the government issued um, an instruction to mosques to basically tell people, to basically tell people that the day will come when they will go and uh, and eradicate the Jews. Why would anybody root for such a government? I certainly won't. Unicorn1620 said, Golda Meir begged the Arabs to stay to protect them during the Nakba. They listened to the Arab League instead to complete the failed Holocaust. Many such cases. Aski said, apostate prophet, a Muslim asked me why Jews have big noses. I said, why? He said, because air is free. What's this mean? Anyone know why? Are you just trying to, uh, are you trying to sneak in something here, pretending to not know what you're talking about? I don't know. But if you want to talk about big noses, this is just a very, very strange uh, stereotype, a very strange racist stereotype to get into because um, that's rather a <laughs> a Nazi racist anti-Semitic stereotype uh, where if you want to go to the Arab population and look at their facial features, you won't see much of a difference. So very, very, very strange. Uh, not as says new crusader kings 3 dlc seems to be good with the new islamic types and tenets while removing jizya option for other faiths and only some islamic faiths have it should be fun doing jihad like a peaceful religion you should stream it i would have to have a better computer to stream games but hey i, sh I should really do it i should really start a second channel and can just play games i would love that it would be very much fun <clears throat> I do love CK3, and I will probably play it to just try it out later. My favorite game is Europa Universalis 4, and I think I have like um, 4,000 hours or something on that, which is <laughs> which is funny because I spent lots of my um, time many years ago playing that nonstop. Eski said Hitler loved Muslim soldiers. Jihadi Link said, Salam AP, I was once in a man in Iran, but I started watching this live stream, and now thanks to AP, peace be upon him, I am now a trans, liberal, Satanist, polyamorous, lesbian, inshallah. Wow, that's very good. Thank you. <laughs> this is a good parody of those comments, right? It's funny, you go on these Muslim videos. I was a, I was a Christian priest before this, but now after watching this, alhamdulillah, I am Muslim with broken English. All colors are entombed in black, said and Matteo Salvini is the only one speaking against Hamas in Italy. Despite his ultra-nationalist ideologies, the left is literally going after Jews. 
What is the current government saying about the whole issue? What is what is uh, what's her name? Maloney saying about all of this? I'm curious. What's her name? Maloney, Maloney, Georgia, Georgia, Georgia Maloney. What is she saying about the conflict? Is she saying anything at all? Israel, Palestine. Let's see. Let's see. Urges international committee not to not to fall into what says Hamas real objective. Italy's PM Maloney says Hamas's real objective is to oh, this is a Turkish agency. I don't want to read Turkish names. Unbridgeable divide between Muslims and the West. I don't know. Urges international community not to fall into something something. Hamas trap. Really? She is trying to say that Hamas is trying to separate Muslims from Europeans or something? This is weird. Everyone was claiming, <laughs> everyone was saying uh, when the election was ongoing and she was about to become prime minister, they were saying she's a, she's a complete racist, she's a fascist, she will be the new Mussolini, she will probably establish a Nazi empire. And, and here she is just sound, trying to sound like a very mainstream um, voice of a reasonable person. It's very, very weird. Very strange. <clears throat> very, very strange. Human Kirk said, have Hitler even admired Islam per Speer Spire? Yeah, and that's what I read earlier. Albert Speer wrote about it and he said that. Alka says, do they view the Greek genocide the same? Um, they are proud of, of the of Greeks, of fighting and defeating the Greeks, if we're talking about the Turks. And they will, there is a thing in Turkey, which is uh, among Turkish people to say, uh, we poured them into the sea. That is a proud statement by Turks of getting rid of all of the Greek people during the First World War and basically forcing them out of the land. Yeah, much more complicated issue. Yarin Zedek said, nothing much has changed for the Jews in probably 5,000 years. The only thing that has changed is the name of the people are called. Yeah. All colors are in Tomlin Black said, you made so many super chats, didn't you? I see like, I have, this is like, the fifth super chat that I read from you here. Thank you. What I wanted to explain is that we are an ethnic minority in Italy and we were an independent state during the Middle Ages. I, I know that. Sardinia. So Sardinian leftists feel that the Palestinian ideals are a national and national when they are Islamic. It's it, this is a it's it's a very it's an interesting issue. But a lot of what is at the core of this whole conflict is about Islam. A lot of the hate against Jews is from Islam, but people don't want to talk about it. But it's not just that people don't want to talk about it because they are ignorant. It's, it's also that lots of people who are aware and who are anti-Hamas or pro-Israel also don't want to talk about it because they feel like it could muddy or you know bring the conversation into some dangerous waters. And it could it could uh, disenfranchise or it could push away certain people who could otherwise be won over. They don't want to be perceived as Islamophobic. Even Israel itself, Israel doesn't want to talk about Islam. For example, it's funny because uh, Muslims often will say Islam, Israel is the complete enemy of Islam and this and that. Israel specifically tries to make sure not to uh, bring Islam into the conversation because they don't want to be um, accused of just being against Muslims or against Islam and then, you know, gathering the, the complete wrath of all the Muslims. They don't want to lose uh, Muslims inside Israel who are loyal to Israel, who work with Israel, who work for Israel and so on. So uh, they, want to, they don't want to address a very clear problem that is there, which is that Islam is behind much of the anti-Semitism and the Palestinian struggle there. But still, it is there, and we know it, right? We know it. We know it's there. Even if Israel itself doesn't want to mention it for political reasons, we know it's there. We know that Islam is um, a root cause in all of this. 
unfortunately. And therefore, then, lots of Western people also get uh, fooled by all, everything that is happening. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sanke said this Nakba narrative is getting shilled hard. Arabs and leftists are trying hard to turn a failed attempt to expel Jews into a Holocaust equivalent. It's true. People are forgetting, but um, when Hamas declared their operation on October 7th, it was meant to be an operation to defeat Israel forever to incite an uprising and violence and to get rid of Israel. Of course, that was a declaration. Nobody actually believed they could do that. So that was kind of a dumb idea, probably. Or it was just a provocation on their part. Maybe they thought this would do something. But the goal was to kill the Jews, to kill as many of them as possible. And lots of the people inside the Palestinian territories, especially in Gaza, celebrated it. They loved it. They celebrated it. Muslim apologists that we know celebrated it. Muslims around the world celebrated it. People who sympathize with the Palestinian uh, idea celebrated it. But, and, and to be very honest, had Hamas been successful that day somehow, had they overpowered Israel, if they were currently going through Israel and massacring the entire Jewish population, lots of the people would still be justifying it and celebrating it and saying, well, they have a right to defend themselves. They have a right to fight for freedom and so on. But since that failed and since Israel declared war and started bombing, they now call this a genocide, which is the weirdest genocide ever because it's like you have a government that is telling you for weeks, we're going to bomb this region, get out of there, go south, get out of the way. We're going to bomb it. If you stay there, you will die. For weeks, they say this, but somehow this is a genocide. Very weird. <laughs> and some say, well, where should they go? They should go south. I know it's not convenient. It's not great, but this is a state of war. I'm sorry, but this is war. You, you get a warning issued. Based on that warning, you can heed the warning and go away, go south, not die in a state of war. There is war. There is nothing to change about this. You can complain as much as you want about how you can't sleep in your, in your home now because there is a war. But there is a war, and this is a reality, a war that was started by the government, by Hamas. You should heed the warnings and go south and save your lives, not stay there and die in bombings, in the fighting, and then claim that this is a genocide. This is just stupid. And I'm not being insensitive here. <laughs> I'm not saying these people deserve to die. Nobody deserves that, but I mean, I feel sad for the children who die, for the civilians, for the innocent people who die there. Imagine you are a parent, you have children, and the, the government on the other side says, we're going to bomb. People are going to die. Leave now. And you have children. And you think, no, I'm going to stay here. Really? If I care about my own children, if I care about life so much, if I care about the lives of my own children so much, then I will say, you know, pride, ideals, ideology, none of this matters right now. I'm going to leave because I don't want my children to die. That's what I would do. If you stay there and you make your children die in a war because you, you, because you refused to leave, because you stayed in a war zone, and you then parade your dead child and show your dead child on camera and say, look, this is what they do, then I don't believe for a second that you actually care about human lives and that you care about children. La, 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 la. 
Egyptian prince said, okay, the one state should be secular Palestine, Palestine with no Hamas or Islamists, Israelis and Palestinians living in peace. Unfortunately, I don't think this can be reality, at least until freed from Islam. But hey, as said earlier, um, Fatah, the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank, is supposed to be the secular one. And they are the ones who issued uh, an instruction to tell people in the mosques that soon the day will come when they will kill all the Jews. So obviously there's something really wrong going on here. I mean, before all of this, during the 70s and 80s, the PFLP, the Palestinian... Um, the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, yeah. The communist group was a very active and popular one. And they had no interest in Islam at all. They were atheists or just very non-religious. But they also had the aim of removing all of, Pal all, of all of Israel and turning it all into Palestine and justifying all kinds of deaths on that path. The DFLP came out of that. They also had the very same ideal. And yeah, maybe there is some hope with some of them to, you know, eventually say, eventually make peace. But you're right, with Islamists, there simply is no way. I don't know. Yedin Zebek said the Jews' enemies went from being called Babylonians to, Pal to Palestinians because these people got pushed together by the Turks and Iranians. There is nuance to that as well. Another said, Apo, you got, you got 4,000 hours in the EU4. Sounds just like a true paradox gamer. A true paradox gamer has to have at least 4,000 hours in one game minus Hearts of Iron 4, LOL. I think um, EU4 is the only one that I actually have more than 1,000 hours on. The others I don't have that much yet. <laughs> I probably will not, will, won't have. That was when I had lots of time to do whatever I wanted to do. <laughs> When I was a younger, when I was a baby, Mr. L said, brother, you have no connection to Jews or Israel, yet you have shown so much support and love. Just know I truly appreciate you and wish you nothing but the best of health and happiness. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I uh, thank you. Thank you. That's all I want to say at the moment. Erkan Abkunay said, be careful, not averse has abused many of your followers, including me, randomly bans people from YouTube channels for no reason, insults your followers for no real reasons, promotes their own personal ventures on other channels. Don't complain about people who moderate and help here, please. Don't don't use this to do that. You can text me for this. I don't know. I don't, please don't tell me about the beefs here. Ali G said, thank you for bringing attention to these facts that many choose to ignore AP uses truth. It's super effective. Thank you. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Appreciate your appreciating my appreciation of the of what is very underappreciated. Dark Brandon said, you don't get it, AP. You can't tolerate the intolerant unless it's Muslims. They get a pass. I know. I know. I'm sorry, Dark Brandon. <laughs> Uh, Yedin Zedek said they literally changed their names from Hashemites to Palestinians and asked Hitler to keep the Jews out of the land. Well, 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 very well put, very well said. Oh, by the way, here. For those who were surprised when I said earlier that uh, even Netanyahu acknowledged the Jewish, the Palestinian right to land and stuff like that, here is an interesting document, which is a transcript from from <clears throat> Israel Prime Minister Netanyahu's Bar Ilan speech, which is a university, uh, in English. This is a very interesting speech. This is the guy that people always accuse of being, you know, the, the, the guy who hates the Palestinians and who wants to get rid of all of them. Um, he, he says, for example, I call upon the leaders of the Arab countries to join together with the Palestinians and with us to promote economic peace. He doesn't say with only us, he says with the Palestinians. Um, assist the Palestinians and us. I appeal to you, our Palestinian neighbors. Does this sound like he's denying the existence of Palestinians? No. Like even lots of hardline right-wing Zionists like would be would disagree heavily here with Netanyahu and be against his stuff. But he's like, he's directly acknowledging our Palestinian neighbors and to the leadership of the Palestinian Authority. I say to the Palestinians, we want to live with you in peace, quiet and good neighborly relations. We want our children and your children to know war no more. 
to our deep regret, this is not happening with the Palestinians. The closer we get to a peace agreement with them, the more they are distancing themselves from peace. A great many people are telling us that withdrawal is the key to peace with the Palestinians, but the fact is that all our withdrawals were met with huge waves of suicide bombers. But hey, he is getting more diplomatic here. Diplomatic here. Even the moderates among the Palestinians are not are not ready to say that the state of Israel has a right to exist. Uh, we need the Palestinian leadership to rise and say we've had enough of this conflict. We recognize the Jewish people to a state. Um, sincere Palestinian recognition of Israel. Palestinian refugee problem. Justice problem of Palestinian refugees must be solved and so on. But let me get to the part. Friends, up to now, I have been talking about the need for the Palestinians to recognize our rights. Now I will talk about the need for us to recognize their rights. Hmm. Doesn't sound like the genocidal guy at all. Friends, we must state the whole truth here. The truth is that in the area of our homeland, in the heart of our Jewish homeland, now lives a large population of Palestinians. We do not want to rule over them. We do not want to run their lives. We do not want to force our flag and our culture on them. In my vision of peace, there are two free peoples living side by side in this small land with good neighborly relations and mutual respect, each with its flag, anthem, and government, with neither one threatening its neighbor's security and existence. I have never heard such a speech from a Palestinian leader. Sorry. This is Netanyahu. I, I don't agree with Netanyahu, and I, and I think that he's, he's problematic in many ways, but... This is Netanyahu. This is supposedly the devil here. <laughs> we have deep disagreements. Palestinians must truly recognize Israel. Any area in Palestinian hand has to be demilitarized. We would have to recognize each other then and so on. This is a, a whole speech appealing to Israelis and to Palestinians and to the world to say, let's make peace. Let's recognize a Palestinian state. Let us find peace. Let's never fight again. Stuff like this is buried in history, and the other side doesn't want to talk about it. Stuff like this is not recognized, although this is so easily accessible. You can find this very simply. Just search for Israel, Israeli PM Netanyahu's Bar Ilan speech in um, transcript or whatever. You can find this right here. Very, very easy. Very easy, mate. <clears throat> very easy, mate. Okay. Alka said, Wikipedia article on Greek genocide says the genocide of the Greeks in all of Anatolia with Armenians was motivated by nationalism, not Islamism. Well, there is, some, there is something to that, which is uh, in Turkey, indeed, it was nationalism had a, had a huge play there. So you could you could say that Islam plays a role in the Armenian genocide or in um, I don't know in the in in a genocide or a massacre of Greek people, but in Turkey it was very much motivated by the Turkish nationalist ideas at that time. So I wouldn't call that entirely incorrect. I have to say, Alka says I guess Turkish nationalism is connected to Islam, sort of, but it's also Turks are very ultra-nationalist. The kind of nationalism in Turkey that is mainstream nationalism is considered totally unacceptable in Europe, for example. Lucid said they can't decide whether Adolf Hitler was a good guy or not. Yeah. Focus on Bible codes. Minister Superchat, thank you. All colors are entombed in black, made it super chat and said. The NSA during the Stuxnet crisis discovered Iranian nuclear power plants in the West Bank, to which the Mossad answered by spreading the virus to all Iranian industrial computers. Not something I know much about. Interesting. Yedin Zedek said, I appreciate your you cousin from the last living descendant of Qumran and last descendant of Melchizedek. Whoa, nice. Nice. That's why you're called Yedin Zedek. Interesting. 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 Hmm. Now I want to get now I want to dig into history now. 
Uh, oh, Tatiana, thank you. Tatiana just put the link into what I just read, the speech of Netanyahu, into the chat, so I can just pin that here. Thanks, Tatiana. That was good. You can see right there that um, the whole idea that Israel was always against the two-state solution is just nonsense. It was uh, That was not the case, and even Netanyahu himself called upon Palestinians and Israelis to recognize each other and to build a future where both states exist. This is the reality, if you want to accept it or not. And it's it's much more serious when I say it with a German accent. I know it. I know this. I know this. I just want to stay live now. I want to go live for the whole day, stay here all day, even if nobody watches anymore. Even if only one viewer is left at the end, I want to stay here. <clears throat> oh, yesterday I was thinking of doing a doing a little uh, map quiz game uh, to compete with <laughs> with Destiny. Yesterday I saw Destiny. He was he was live and he was trying to uh, trying to guess guess countries, and he couldn't do it. <laughs> he was very bad at it, and I wanted to show how it's really done. I also want to I want to brag about my about how good I am at guessing countries or maybe how bad I am maybe it's, it's going to be a complete embarrassment and also see if I can do it or not and then in the end we can all praise me or we can all humiliate me whatever you want how about we do that let's have some fun I want to play a game let's start with the uh, with where should we start ultimate map quiz site. I'm going to do this now. I'm going to do something different now. Forever. Let's see. Caribbean, Native American. So American? What is what is what America? South America? Wait, this is not what I saw. Asia. Is there a world? Is there something about the world? World. 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 Asia. Huh. Where is this? What is this? I want to play a game now. I want to play games. Geography games, Caribbean, U.S. states. I wanted to start with Asia because I saw Asia yesterday. Asia, Asia, Asia. Oh, yeah, here. Okay, let's start. Let's test. Let's see if I know anything at all. I'm just going to brag here. I'm going to start with this because I probably know much of this, and then we'll, and then we should get to something that is difficult. If you are watching at this point still, tell me uh, <laughs> which part of the world I should do next. If I, because I want to pick something after this that I that I totally suck at, because I'm probably good at this. Okay, let's start. Uh, Jordan. Jordan is here. Japan. Japan is over here. United Arab Emirates is over here. Israel is here. Oh, there's no Palestine, it's only Israel. Very, this is very Islamophobic. I'm done with this. Uh, Thailand is, I believe, this this one here. I these advertisements get the hell out of here. Thailand should be this one, right? No, this one, no, this one, this one, yeah, Thailand. Okay, Sri Lanka is this one, got it. North Korea is this one, Cambodia should be this. Qatar is God. Here, I, here we go again. Every single time when I try to figure out which one is Qatar and which one is Bahrain, I get it wrong. One of these two is Qatar and the other is Bahrain. <laughs> and for some reason, I can't ever memorize which one is which. Is it the northern one or the southern one? Huh. I think it should be the northern one. Let's see. Ah, you see? Again. Again, this is insane. This is insane. I could I could take this like so many times and still get it wrong. <laughs> Bangladesh is <laughs> here. Kuwait is over here. Syria is uh, here. Pakistan, Pakistan doesn't exist. It's India. They stole this land and created. Just kidding. Um, but hey, if you want to talk about that, if you want to be strict here, 
anyway, Kyrgyzstan is over here somewhere. It's one of these two. One of them is Tajikistan. One of them is Kyrgyzstan. Uh, I want to say that this is Kyrgyzstan and this is Tajikistan. Yes. Turkey is here, which I I prefer chicken. Bhutan is here. Maldives is over here. Russia is over here. Turkmenistan is here. East Timor is over here somewhere. This? No. Ah, uh, here. <laughs> Oman is here. Mongolia is here. Yemen is here. Nepal. <clears throat> I said Nepal, it's a country. Nepal is here. Lebanon is here. Kazakhstan is here, this huge thing over here. Vietnam is here. India is here. Philippines is here. Myanmar is here. Tajikistan is this one. Nah. This is Uzbekistan. This here is Tajikistan. I just I I said it earlier. I just said it a minute ago. I said one of these is Kyrgyzstan, the other is Tajikistan. <laughs> Laos is here. Afghanistan is here. Well, I'm not getting hundred percent today, so I might have to punish myself after this uh, and beat myself on the back with a long stick. To make up for my sins, Uzbekistan is this one. Bahrain is this. Finally, of course, I get it right when I have the other one. Armenia is Armenia should be all of this free Armenia. All of this should be Armenia. Uh, Armenia is actually here. Azerbaijan is here. Saudi Arabia is here. Taiwan is this chunk here also called the actual China. Indonesia is this. Georgia, which is different from the American Georgia, is this. Iraq is this. China, China, China. I just wanna hear Trump say China, let's see, China. Let's say China. 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 You go over to China. 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 <laughs> I love that video. I could watch it forever. Uh, China is here. See, I'm wasting my time. There's supposedly a time counter here. Uh, <laughs> Singapore is um, this one here. <laughs> Brunei is this. Malaysia is this. Oh, hey, I clicked on this, you idiot. Um, South Korea is this. Iran is this. Got it. 96%. Yay! Yay! Which one should I play next? Which one should I play next? I'm very good at Europe. I will probably know all in Europe. I can go to that. I'm probably good at the Americas. I'm probably horribly bad at um, the Pacific Islands. Who the hell knows any of that anyway? <laughs> and I'm probably very bad at Africa. So let's see, which one should I go next? Africa, Africa. Yeah, now people are saying Africa because I said Africa is bad. Okay, well. Gotta do it. Gotta do it. Let's see. Africa. Really? Should I go Africa? God, Africa will be... I, it's it's, it's going to be very difficult. I don't know Africa. Africa countries. All right. Here we go. Here we go. It's going to be bad. After this, I'll probably uh, bury my head in shame. I don't see... I don't, I don't know. Where is Benin? I have no idea. <laughs> if I don't know it, can I just skip it? I have no idea. I don't know anything about Africa. I don't know. Can I skip this? <laughs> Uh-oh. What do I do? Learn? 
No. Oh, I have to play. Okay, I'm now, now I'm in Senegal. Senegal. Senegal is somewhere here. Somewhere over here. I know. Ivory Coast, Ghana, Togo. <laughs> Senegal. Wow, I'm so, I'm terrible in Africa. Let's also, I have no idea. No idea. It can't be this. I know that this is South Sudan. I don't know what to do. It's right here. Wow. I don't know anything about Africa at all. What a shame. How disgusting. So Tomain Principe is somewhere here, I think. One of these things here. One of these chunks. <laughs> Complete opposite side. <laughs> uh, Cape Verde is somewhere here. Uh, I don't know, man. I really have no idea what Africa. Morocco. I know North Africa. I know that one. It's over here. Mauritius is here. No, that's Mauritania. Wow. <laughs> wow. I've never been so bad at a single thing in my life. Seychelles, I just saw it. It's here. I'm, this, is, this is a trick. Sudan. Sudan. Sudan is here. Wait, this is Sudan, right? I'm so buried in my ignorance right now. I don't even, I can't even tell. Okay, yeah, it is. Botswana is somewhere here. Yeah, I actually got it. I got it. <laughs> Eswatini. I've never even heard of Eswatini. Who has heard of Eswatini? Who knows what Eswatini? I know Angola. Angola is somewhere here. It, is, it has the communist thing on it. It is somewhere here. See, I was close. Can you, can you guess where this one is? Can you guess? It's this one. I got it. I knew it. <laughs> Western Sahara is here. Easy, easy peasy. Central African Republic. I want to say it's this, but it's probably not. It's probably Congo. Central African Republic. Is it this? Is it here? Got it. Okay. Zambia. Here, no, that's Zimbabwe. Zambia, got it. Okay, Liberia, somewhere here. This one, got it. Yes, Libya is uh, here. Yes, Uganda, Uganda. I don't know. I have no idea where that is. I know it's here. Yes, okay. Eritrea, I know that one. I think I know this. I know this. I know this. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. This is Somalia. This is Ethiopia. What the hell is this again? And what is this? I would say this is Eritrea. <laughs> it's Djibouti. That's where Sheikh Djibouti is from. Okay, this one is Eritrea. Got it. Zimbabwe. Uh, Zimbabwe is here. I saw it earlier. I would otherwise I would have no clue. Get out of here, Santa. Burkina Faso. <clears throat> this is just an embarrassment. I don't know why I'm even still doing this. Here. Okay. Chad. Be a Chad. Chad is here somewhere. Here. Chad. Sierra Leone. This is hopeless. Hopeless situation. What am I even trying to prove? <laughs> okay, I'm done with Africa. I don't know. I don't know Africa, okay? I don't know Africa. No idea about Africa. <clears throat> What's interesting is Europe anyway. The rest of the world doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. Okay. See? You want to see this? You want to see this? Estonia. Sweden. Latvia. Switzerland. Iceland. Liechtenstein. Cyprus. San Marino, Czech Republic, Moldova, Slovenia, Vatican, Kosovo, Austria, Malta, Belgium, Bulgaria, Finland, Lithuania, Greece, Luxembourg, Serbia, Slovakia. This is Czech and this is Slovakia. That's how I remember it. 
Hungary, uh, this North Macedonia or Macedonia, which used to be just called Macedonia or Macedonia, Montenegro, been there, Romania, Denmark. Oh, what am I doing here? <laughs> Almost lost my 100% streak possibility. Maybe I'll still lose it. Belarus, Netherlands, Andorra. This is one of those small ones here. This here is Andorra. This one is Mamma uh, Mamma ma, 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 Mia. Andorra. Yes, good. Croatia, Russia, no way. Spain, France. I'm just bragging right now. This is totally unnecessary. I know I know all of these. Monaco, uh, Monaco. United Kingdom, Ukraine, Albania, Ireland. I'm really just showing off right now. You can leave at this point. Germany, Italy, Poland. Yay, 100%. Got it. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, after this pathetic attempt at showing off and bragging about my great knowledge, uh, I'm going to read the final super chats and then I'm going to leave. Hannah Anderson said, "You are German." Of course, I'm German. A little, I'm a, I'm a little bit German. Uh, thanks for the claps. Thanks, thanks. I got it all, and we're proud of that. Yeah. Uh, Yellen Zedek said, "Oh, I read that already." Arkan Abgunay said, "The fun thing is the only way to stop the Israel war is a bilateral peace, and Palestinians have never approached it positively." True. True, true, true. The, the Oracle of Whimsy said, do you think a one-state solution could work if Israel focused on integration? If Israel annexed everything and ran an integration campaign, would it work? I think it's the only possibility. Not sure how it is. Not sure if it, you can actually make it work. Uh... <laughs> Um, what was that? Seb us said, see, AP knows all of Europe, but none of Africa. Prove he's a racist. I know, it's terrible. Black Angel said, take your cookie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the, thank you for this. If you want to give me more cookies, I can do another map game here. Although <laughs> I already know everything else. I'm probably bad at not perfect at South America. But I'm not going to do that now. All right. Abu Ahruf said Jizya, not from main bit. Yes. Yes. Yadin Zedek said, look up Qumran. Isn't that an Iranian? Um, Qumran. Qumran. No, it's not. It's not what I'm talking about. But what does it have to do with um I guess, uh, okay yeah okay i'll look it up i'll look it up all colors are entombed in black forgot to say winnie the pooh work bar oh yeah winnie the pooh work bar uh how about no sake said did mo ever say 72 whores are exclusive to each jihadi having them to be shared would, would solve the demographics without even taking kufarets out of hell well every muslim will get uh yeah, Qumran is. I'm thinking about something different. Qumran is 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 Palestine, is is Israel. Qum, I'm I'm thinking of something. Else. I'm thinking of Qum, 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 which is Iran. <laughs> Did Mo ever say? Oh yeah, I just read that. I don't even remember it. Um, so he said every Muslim gets virgins. Every Muslim, every believer who goes to paradise gets virgins, but. Those who fight get the most of the virgins. They get most of the vir they get more virgins than every, anybody else. And yeah, I mean, if, if they if they made a deal to just share the virgins with everybody in the world, that would probably work. But uh, not sure. Allah probably needs some better needs some needs to figure out marketing. Needs to figure out discount campaigns for the regular believer and stuff like that. I don't know, but yeah. Maria Pass said South America. Are you saying that because you are from South America? I'm going to do that in another stream. Maybe I'll just do a fun stream sometime and just go through this stuff. 
But that would be interesting. I'm actually curious how I am in South America. That would be interesting. I will get to that. All right. With that said, I wanted to say bye to Ryan Gosling, but I already removed him from my screen. Uh, I will be back soon. Pedo Dreams said Slava Kokaini. Isn't one virgin enough because she gets to be a virgin again for all eternity? No, you have to have all you have to have a big variety of virgins. That's what needs to be. That's every man. I was told every man just wants to have sex, eternal sex with as many women as possible. And Allah knows this because He created men, which is why He knows best what is for everyone which is why he will give everyone many, many virgins in heaven so that they can have sex with as many of them as possible, but the women just get to watch. That's what I was told. And I know, I know science disagrees. I know psychology disagrees. I know everything disagrees. But if Islam says is it, then it must be true. I don't care. Anthony Shaddock said, isn't that hedonism? Yeah, but Islam is basically... Uh, post mortem hedonism, uh, <laughs> eternal sex sounds exhausting. I know, I know that's but there will be no exhaustment in heaven, you will just have sex forever and it will be great. It will be great, it will be fantastic. <laughs> Sorry, wrong button. Uh, yes, you can't get exhausted there because it is a metaphysical matter. Yes, uh, all right, thanks everybody. Maria Paz said from Chile. Oh, Chile. Nice. Nice. South America, Chile. Okay, cool. Uh, Sarah said, fun stream. Nice to see you here. Nice to see you here. Nice to see you here, Sarah. Nice to have you. Felix, nice to have you, Felix. Vinnie the Pooh laughed. Isaiah Dillard said, why the Tate's perfect for Islam? Yes. My wife said, Muslim women get lots of muscular strong men with a bit of dad bod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and beards and stuff okay thanks everyone i'm gonna leave i'll be live tonight with david wood and ip on david's channel uh until then have a fantastic day and as always and as always stay away from islam <laughs>